So the point of this uh, this this problem was to just look at um, car crashes and how how they actually use uh, energy and um, in particular work uh, to to make um, to make their cars uh, safer. And I'm actually going to do some a little different show quick video here. Um, so uh, if you look at, at a front end car crash, um, uh, they're, they're pretty violent. Um, Lower well, actually says 35 mile an hour one, um, but you'll notice a couple of things. Um, if you notice right here, oh, oh. Uh, if you notice a couple of things, one thing that you notice is that the um, that is how much actually the uh, so if you look right here, uh, you'll notice how much actually the front end compresses. And that if you and if you look at the person also, you'll notice how far they actually fly forward during this um, during the car crash. That, that's actually on purpose. Um, one of the things we learn, of course, from our uh, from our energy um, from our energy calculations is that basically we have a certain amount of kinetic energy whenever we're uh, whenever we're traveling at a certain speed, and to stop in this case by running into a wall. Um, to stop our bodies, uh, the, the only thing we can do to lower the amount of force that we're going to have on our bodies is by increasing the distance basically over which that we're actually stopping. And so let's go ahead and go over and, and, and see how this works actually in the calculation. Um, so again, we've got a car. Um, I'm going to draw it going to the right because uh, I hate drawing things going to the left. Okay, so we got our car. All right, look, that's a that's a highly advanced car that I'm driving, that I'm drawing there. So we got going at some some speed, and, and that one was a 35 mile an hour crash. We're gonna go ahead and do a 60 mile per hour crash. Um, so we got this going uh, 60 miles an hour, and, and again, I'm just gonna use my my normal uh, my normal um, shorthand, which just say that that's that's 30 meters per second. Again, I, I know that's not exactly right, but it, it's close enough for what we're doing. So we're going to go fly. We're flying along at 30 meters per second. Then we hit a brick wall. Okay, and we need to stop. Now we have a person, of course, in here uh, driving. And what we're interested in is how far that person. If you look at kind of where they are. Um, what we're interested in is how far after is after they they make contact with the wall. Basically, how far can we have that person travel? Do we need to have the person travel, basically, to to keep them from getting hurt? Basically, to keep them from from just cracking their sternum. Um, the car it turns out does this a bunch of different ways. It does this by having this part, uh, you know, this this part of the the nose crumples all up and that squishes and we also have seat belts. The seat belts actually stretch and allow the person to move forward. Um, of course we have airbags to slow them down, keep them from actually running into the seat, uh, running into the the, um, uh, the actual steering wheel. But there are all these different things that are happening basically to maximize this distance and we'll see why that is here. Um, so let's just look again, we got energy initial equal to energy final. Let's look at what we have. Again, we're not going to worry anything about potential energy. These things aren't changing um, uh, their height. They're staying at a constant height. Um, so y is equal to zero the whole way across. Um, we know that we have kinetic energy initial. We also know that at the end, there's no kinetic energy. That's the whole point. We're stopping the person. Um, now the question is, well, where did all this kinetic energy go? And and, and again, in, in this case, we're just doing a analysis of the person. We're not, we're not looking at the car. Um, so the person has a ton of kinetic energy. They're moving at 30 meters per second, just like the car does. Um, where does all that energy go? And so the answer is, of course, that the, the energy um, the, the, the energy obviously didn't disappear. What happened is, is that we forgot about um, the the work that basically the seatbelt's doing on the person during this process. So again, we're doing the um, analysis of the person. Uh, we need to include any kind of energy that's basically uh, entering the person. And what's happening in particular is that as this person is um, is is flying forward, um, of course they have a seatbelt on, and that seatbelt is providing some force back on the person as the person tends to move forward. All right, so the force of the seatbelt 
as the person moves moves backwards, basically. Um, and that's the force that's on 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 their storm, sternum. Um, and so what we forgot is that there's this work non conserved that's being done on this person um, that's basically taking away that energy and it's being done the whole way right until the end and at the end basically the crash stops and the person is moving and you do, doesn't have to do any work on him anymore. Um, so the the um, so let's go ahead and look at that. Uh, the work not conserved as usual again if we look here work is always um, just as a side um, work is always defined as just a force times a, over a distance um, with a cosine theta if, if they're not in the same angle. Of course, in this case, the cosine theta, the, the, the theta is actually 180 degrees. They're basically in opposite directions. We've got the distance going this way and the, the, the seatbelt force going this way, which means that this angle is 180 degrees. Um, and so this actually gives us a minus FD because uh, the cosine of, of theta is, is minus um, is minus one, and so what we end up getting instead in in here when we start plugging everything in is we get a minus force of the seatbelt um, times the the distance over which the person is going plus the kinetic energy that they had initially that equals zero. So basically the 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 work non conserved is taking away all of the kinetic energy and making the energy at the end of the day of the of the, the person system zero. And so from this we can basically find what we're trying to find, which is how far the person in the driver's seat should be able to move forward in a crash. Um, if we just uh, if we just move uh, if we add force uh, times distance uh, uh, force times distance on both sides we get one half mv1 squared mv initial squared is equal to f of the seatbelt times the distance. And we already know the force of the seatbelt, we're trying to solve for the distance, so we get one, uh, we get mv squ initial squared over 2d. And so if we go ahead and plug in the values for that, we can put in uh, our standard 70 kilogram per person, our initial velocity, um, which again is around 30 meters per second, um, two, and, uh, sorry, this should not be the distance I divided by, I should have divided by the force of the seatbelt. Um, times the force of the seatbelt, which is this 4,200 newtons. Okay, and then we can get our calculators out here, and I always forget this square. Okay, all right. Get this calculator out here, and we'll go ahead and do this calculation. We got 70 times 30 times 30 divided by 2 divided by 4,200. And we get that it takes about 7.5 meters to stop, which is a really long distance. Um, obviously, they're not going to do that. And this just goes to show you why 60 kilometer uh, or 60 mile per hour uh, crashes are so dangerous. So if you hit a wall, um, you would need 7.5 meters to really stop yourself in a really safe manner. You don't have that. Um, and, and again, that's why actually the crash test that you saw before was actually at 35 mile per hour. I think 35 mile per hour is about all they promise you as far as being safe if you run into a brick wall. Um, so that gives you a good idea of how um, we get uh, this um, uh, this maximum uh, distance that, that we can crash in. It also gives you a good idea, again, about what I've been talking about the whole time. If you want to take away, in this case, for instance, a bunch of kinetic energy that someone has, and you're doing work through a force by a seatbelt, you have kind of two options. You can either have a, a, a go over a long distance and that can decrease your force, or you can, if you do it over a really short distance, you're going to have a very large force, which unfortunately is going to be the case in an accident like this. Um, so that just gives you some idea about how this works. I hope that was clear to you, um, and uh, let me know in class if you have any more questions, and I'll see you then.